methyl acyl sodium chloride. Right, so that's what we're electrolyzing. So you guys remember electrolyzing from TXC and how that works? Yes, Mr. Catherine, I know. Yeah, so let me just draw that. That's very good, Lancelot. You remember the key things. That's definitely the key stuff that you should remember, if anything, about electrolysis, right? So let me just draw a quick sketch as to what this diaphragm cell situation looks like. Right, so here would be our titanium. So this Ti means titanium. This is our anode. That's what our anode is made out of. And then we have bam, 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 bam. Chlorine is going to come out of our anode. Chlorine gas, right? Um, bam, bam, bam. So chlorine is going to come out of that. Then we part it in two with our diaphragm. Right? So this is a diaphragm. Diaphragm. And let me just finish drawing the other half of it now, which is the um, cathode portion. So from our cathode, right, we're going to get out. H2 gas, right? And then for our cathode, we're gonna use a steel cathode, okay? Steel cathode. And remember now we're putting in brine. So that's concentrated, right? Any CL HL that we're putting in. And that's what we're actually electrolyzing. So this is our electrolyte, guys. That's our electrolyte. Um, and down here, we're gonna have, down here, we're gonna have, bam, bam, bam. We're going to have our NaOH coming out because remember we're making what? Chlorine and sodium hydroxide, right? We get hydrogen as well, but let's write NaOH. Are you guys following me? Yes, please. All right, so this is the setup of the diaphragm cell, right? That's what we're using. We're using a diaphragm cell to make chlorine and sodium hydroxide. And what we're doing, guys, is that we're electrolyzing our brine solution, right? So the brine is our electrolyte, right? The brine is our electrolyte. And our electrolyte is going to be made up of ions, right? So this is a concentrated aqueous solution. So we're going to have Na plus cations in there. We're going to have Cl minus as our anion. We're also going to have H plus from the water. And we're going to have OH as well from the water because it's aqueous, right? So these are going to be our, these ones down here are going to be our anions, right? And then these ones are going to be our cations, right? So where do anions go and where do cations go and what kind of reaction is taking place where they're going anions go to the cation okay um no yes chlorine and hydroxide is going to move but chlorine is going to be be in favor therefore All right. Um, what is this? It accepts or it gives up? It gives up electrons. And what do we call that process? Anodization. Ox redux it oxidation. Yeah, oxidation. Right. So oxidation me oxidation is the loss of electrons, right? Yes, please. So it's gonna end up losing electrons. So this is our anion, and this is gonna go to our anode, right? Anions go to the anode, right? So it's going to go to the anode and it's going to lose its electrons and become just our neutral chlorine. That's why chlorine comes out. Okay. 
So make sure that you're comfortable with these half equations. It loses its two electrons and there are two moles of chloride ion. So that is um, what oxidation is taking place at the anode, right? That's a loss of electrons. Then at the cathode, now what's gonna what's gonna go here and what's gonna happen? The Na plus and the H plus. Yeah, and who is gonna win that? What Lancelot? Who's gonna win out? Because they can't all be um, they can't all Mr. undergo the reaction that's gonna happen there. Only one of them will win, right? Mr. Bonnie, I go in. Why? It's the guy that just hydrogen me because hydrogen always win unless it is sil what's that? silver it's lead or something like that Ooh. yeah because a because h plus because hydrogen is low in the discharge series right and sodium so hydrogen okay. is gonna win because it's below sodium in the discharge series right or the reactivity series so at the cathode, right? At the cathode, um, let me write that in a different color. So at the cathode, guys, this reaction is taking place. Our H plus is being what? Reduced or oxidized? H plus is being reduced or oxidized at the cathode. What's happening to H plus? This is gonna be um, reduced. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that means it's going to gain electrons, right? Yes, so miss. It's going to gain electrons and end up becoming H2 gas. H2 that's gas. Why our H2 gas pops out of here, right? Out of the cathode portion. So to balance this, it would be 2H plus and two electrons gives me hydrogen gas. And the reaction there is a reduction. Okay, guys? Yes, miss. So that's all the information that we need for this part. So they say we must include the type of reactions taking place and the equation. So that's what we just did, right? We wrote it's an oxidation taking place at the anode and it's a reduction taking place at the cathode and we wrote out our half reaction. So that's good. Okay, guys, are you all okay with that? Yes, are you okay? Okay. All right. So let's let's... Let's scroll down. That was for five marks, guys. Five marks. So be careful, Mark. okay? Make sure you cover everything. Woo. Five marks, okay? Mama Zula. All right, so here we go now. The chlorine produced in the chloralkaline industry, that's just the industry where we're producing chlorine gas and um, sodium hydroxide, which is literally what we're talking about up top, okay? So when you see chloralkaline industry, it just means the industry that makes chlorine and sodium hydroxide, okay? That's what that means. And so the chlorine that's produced in this industry, it may be reacted with other products of the electrolysis. So it might react with the hydrogen, right? And remember, we form sodium hydroxide from that electrolysis as well. So you can have your chlorine reacting with this, or you can have it reacting with this as well. So the first, the part I is saying, okay, the chemical changes which occur to produce um, hydrochloric acid, I want you to describe that. Describe the chemical changes. I would just write the reaction and then talk about it, right? So we have hydrogen reacting with the chlorine, right? Are you guys following me? Yes, miss. To produce hydrochloric acid. So let me balance it. Um, so this would be what? Um, two put a two here and we're good, right? So that's that reaction. Then the one that uh, that's occurring to produce hypochlorite, right? is when the chlorine is reacting with the um, NaOH, right? So that would be Cl2 plus NaOH. And what am I going to get as my product? NaOCl. All right, that's perfect, Kadia. NaOCl. 
C, L, and what else am I gonna get? Hydrogen, yes. What are some of the other products of that reaction? Water. I'm no. gonna get, I'm gonna get water and I'm gonna get sodium chloride as well, okay? So I'm gonna get any CL and I'm also gonna get water. Yes. We get salt, bleach, and water. Exactly. So this is bleach, right? This first one is bleach. Right? Two mark longer equation or one mark. Exactly. I don't know why, but that's that's how they did it. Okay, so let's talk about what the chemical change is now. The chemical changes is that the the um, chlorine is being reduced in this case, right? So the oxidation number of the chlorine is going from zero here to minus one. So what is what kind of reaction is that? What's taking place? What's happening to chlorine? If it's going from zero to minus one. If it's going from zero to minus one and the oxidation number is decreasing, what do we call that? Reduction. So this is being reduced, right? No, so reduction of chlorine is happening in this case, right? That's a chemical change. And then in this particular case now, chlorine is going from zero to what is the oxidation state of chlorine in bleach? Hmm? Miss, what did you say? What's the oxidation state of chlorine in bleach? In bleach, so that is minus two, that is plus one, plus one. <clears throat> All right, so it's going from zero to plus one, the oxidation number is increasing, so what's happening to chlorine? Oxidation. What? Oxidation, right? Yes, that's what I would write for this. I know it seems like a lot, but I would write all of this to um, get all my marks. All right, so that's that. And then now, last question, dun, 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 two marks. Um, two modifications, you have to describe two modifications. What did you say? Describe two modifications that could be made to the structure of the electrolytic cell that I drew for you guys up top earlier. How can we modify that structure? The structure now, so how we make it, right? To ensure that the chemical change is in E part I. So this one in particular where we have, what happened here again, guys? How did we produce the hypochlorite? What did we do? We used to produce bleach, we produce um, any NaCl, I'll produce um, water. What did we react to produce it? We sodium. reacted NaCl and uh, sodium hydroxide. No, yeah? Nope. No, we, well, we used sodium hydroxide and chloride. Right. Yes. Right. And what did we get again? What were our products? We got NaOCl, we got NaCl, and we got water. Okay, so basically they're saying we don't want this to happen. Like we don't want this to we don't want to convert all of this to bleach, right? So how can we change the structure of the electrolytic cell? Like um, above, when I drew it earlier, I drew what we call a diaphragm cell, right? A diaphragm cell, a diaphragm was that line in the middle that separated the anode from the cathode, right? So did you guys take down my drawing? Did you draw it on your page? Yes, I didn't it down. But do you remember it? You see, I remember the brine coming in, the nodes, the diaphragm, the sodium hydroxide, and the two gases going up. All right, so. that's perfect. That's perfect. So normally we use a diaphragm cell. So what we can do is use uh, what we call a mercury cell instead. 
use a mercury cell instead, and that's a little bit different um, in the way that it's set up. But what that's gonna do is that you see how at our um, at our cathode, how we preferentially reduce the hydrogen. Um, are you guys following me? We're at the end here, so just follow me closely, right? Just follow me closely. In the diagram that I drew earlier, it was the H plus that we reduced, right? It was the H plus that we reduced at the cathode, right? And from that, we got the hydrogen, right? So we got the hydrogen at the cathode in the um, diaphragm cell, right? This was our product at the cathode in the diaphragm cell, right? Remember that the two things that were competing was the Na plus, right? And the H plus were competing. So these two things were competing and the H1, because it's lower in the, um, the discharge series, so the H1. So that means that the Na was left behind, chilling out, and it was able to then combine with some OH, right? That was there as well, right? And so that's how we were able to form the um, NaOH that then formed the bleach. So what we're doing when we use a mercury cell, in the mercury cell, Na plus is what's preferentially discharged, right? In, because in the mercury cell, Na plus, is what gets discharged because of how it's set up, right? Because of how the mercury cell set up, um, Na plus is what's gonna get discharged. Right? So, so there will be no Na, so there will be no Na plus just hanging around, right? to make any OH and then cause this reaction to proceed. Do you guys follow so that? You just have hydrogen. You just have the hydrogen coming off of the, um, where is this at the cathode? Wait, wait, wait. So you have the hydrogen. The hydrogen is not gonna, the hydrogen, the H plus ion is gonna still be there, right? In the mercury cell case, the H plus ions are not gonna get discharged. What's going to get discharged are the Na plus. So the H plus will be hanging around, but that's not a problem because that's not what's going to make the hypochlorite, right? What we don't want hanging around are these sodium ions that can combine with OH to form the NaOH, right? So when we use the mercury cell, we discharge the Na plus, so we get rid of it. So it's not going to be just hanging around to make NaOH which then proceeds to make the hypochlorite, okay? Yes. So we're trying to change the electrolytic cell so that this, this reaction doesn't happen. That's what they ask us to do. How can I modify the cell so that this doesn't happen? And one of the ways is to use a mercury cell instead of the, instead of the um, diaphragm. And another way is to um, this particular um, NaOH, that forms hypochlorite. So there are two different reactions that can happen. When we have NaOH reacting with chlorine, we can either have, um, we can have cold dilute NaOH and that's what gives this. So in this particular reaction, the NaOH is cold and dilute, right? And that is the, the NaOH, cold dilute aqueous NaOH is gonna give us NaOCl. So if we can find a way to um, make it so that the NaOH that's formed is hot, right? If we, if we make it so that the NaOH that's, that gets pulled off, right, is hot and... Um, concentrated. We're gonna get a different product. In this case, we would get um, any CLO3, 